In this week's update of the Omicron surge uh, from IHME, first we've made some changes to our assumptions about Omicron driven by new data from the United Kingdom, from the US, and recently published uh, analyses also from South Africa. Uh, based on the Office of National Statistics, uh, PCR prevalence surveys in the UK and similar but smaller scale data from South Africa, we have revised the fraction of infections that are asymptomatic from what we had assumed before, 90% to a range from 80 to 90%. Secondly, we have seen evidence to suggest that the infection hospitalization rate, the fraction of infections that get hospitalized is somewhat higher than we said before. And that's in part due to the fact that um, there are so many people getting infected with Omicron, we get many incidental hospitalizations, people coming in with some other disease process, but who happen to test positive. So to reflect that reality, uh, we've increased the fraction of infections that end up hospitalized to be centered around about 12 and a half percent. And then finally, the infection fatality rate is down slightly from last week because of a series of studies uh, that suggest that even amongst those who end up in hospital, the death rate is down about 90% uh, compared to Delta. So putting all those together, putting in the, the, the uh, evidence that's emerged of rapid uh, spread in Europe and the US, a number of other countries uh, in the world, what we see is a earlier peak than we previously estimated. So massive surge of infections peaking in many countries in mid-January. And then depending on later introduction, those peaks can spread out in, into February. That peak of uh, infections is translating uh, country by country into record case numbers we expect in most places. That's a function of the fraction of infections that get detected. And there's two factors that are going into that that are really challenging in some settings. First, what fraction of symptomatic cases are gonna be detected? We expect that to sort of stay at the same level as for Delta. And then what fraction of asymptomatic cases, because there's so many more of them with Omicron, will get detected. And we're largely trying to look in the recent past and say those infection detection rates for symptomatic and asymptomatic will stay about the same in the future. Uh, because of the shift to asymptomatic, a larger share for Omicron, much larger share from 40% up to 85% asymptomatic, we expect overall the infection detection rate to drop a lot. Having said that, we are running up in many countries at testing capacity. There will be record case numbers uh, in many countries. For example, at the global level, we expect that the number of cases that will be reported globally is going to top out in uh, the month of January at over 5 million cases a day. Uh, we expect in a country like the United States that uh, reported cases will exceed on, on the, on the moving average, not on given the, the fluctuation day by day um, and given weekend reporting, but the moving average will go over a million cases a day in the United States uh, and similar record case numbers in many other countries. In India, for example, given a much lower infection detection rate, we still think there will be 500,000 cases reported a day uh, at the peak uh, in, in January. Now, that huge number of infections, that very rapid exponential rise that we're seeing in so many countries uh, is going to um, translate into increased numbers of hospitalizations. That increase in hospitalizations at the global level, or for example, in the US or India, is actually uh, larger than perhaps uh, we, the, the sort of reality of individuals needing to go to hospital for COVID because there's so much Omicron transmission in the community that many people who have other problems, let's say a heart attack, showing up at a hospital will test positive. So we should, and we're seeing this in the U.S., uh, with reports now from New York State, for example, of 40, 50 percent of, of hospitalizations are actually, quote, incidental. So big increase in hospitalizations, higher than 
previous peaks uh, in the US, for example, but a good chunk of that is going to be this incidental surge. Now, in terms of death, the good news is that we see a very mild to small increase in death at the global level and in each country because it, Omicron, even once you get to hospital, is so much less severe. And if you take in those three factors, a uh, big increase in asymptomatic, uh, a maybe 50% reduction amongst cases that end up in hospital. And then if you do get to hospital, a 80 to 90% reduction in the death rate in hospital, all of those put together, you have a 98% or more reduction in the infection fatality rate. So what can we do about Omicron? Uh, we include in our analysis, in our release, uh, different scenarios, uh, mask use uh, going up to 80%, a uh, more rapid scale up a third dose, uh, a scale up of vaccination reaching some of the hesitant. And uh, the key takeaway from those scenarios in the case of Omicron, and there's, it varies a little by country by country, but there's very little impact of any of those policy scenarios. And the reason is, is that by the time a country is in the exponential rise for Omicron, transmission is so intense in the community that there's very little that can be done fast enough to stop this Omicron wave. Now, the flip side of that is that we expect this wave to peak quickly. Uh, in, in where we've seen data in South Africa and the UK, the peak from start to the, the peak is four to five weeks and then drop pretty rapidly uh, afterwards. Now that, the, you know, the timing depends on the country and you'll see that in our, uh, our data visualizations, but we do expect that by um, March, most of the Omicron wave that will infect 60% perhaps of the world's population, and in some countries more than that, uh, should be over. And in fact, the intense part uh, should probably be over in many places in the month of January. Now, uh, we, we don't expect a lot of death from Omicron. We do expect some hospitalization, both incidental and, and true, uh, driven by, by the COVID infections. But perhaps the thing that's going to cause the greatest challenge is disruption because of the just sheer volume of people who are going to be positive that will be picked up on workplace, travel or school screening. And this large number of asymptomatic individuals that have been picked up by screening tests will then be asked to quarantine for some period of time. And that will lead to considerable disruption. And we actually expect that the disruption to the healthcare system, to hospitals, from staff shortages due to quarantine from testing will be greater than the disruption from just the, the numbers of new cases driven by COVID itself. Now, what can we do about the disruptions? Well, it's challenging given current protocols in most countries that do require testing and quarantine, but there's a strong case to be made that because 50, 60% of each community is going to get infected with Omicron, that there is, and there's little prospect of infection control, that testing asymptomatics is perhaps not useful since we really can't see in our scenarios any way to affect transmission in a meaningful uh, 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 way. And it, I think many governments are going to need to consider stopping testing of asymptomatic individuals and revising protocols for essential workers as to when uh, those that are symptomatic and test positive, when they are appropriate for to go back to the workplace. So, uh, you know, looking out farther as we get many questions about the long-term consequence, of course, it's very hard to know. We do know that Omicron gives, uh, at least from neutralizing antibody studies, protection against Delta. We presume, although of course we don't have direct evidence yet on it, that Omicron protects against Omicron. So we don't expect to see another wave unless, of course, there's a new variant, which is certainly very po possible. Uh, but we do expect, even without a new variant, that uh, later in 2022, we should see a return of infections in some place, even if it's just from Omicron, due to waning immunity from infection-acquired immunity and from vaccination. So those are the key findings. We're in a very very different phase uh, now for the pandemic with much greater transmission, 
but far less of a consequence on um, you know uh, serious outcomes such as death. <laughs>